What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we are going to take a look at the July 12th edition of Impact and another great episode. So we got a couple more matches announced for Slammiversary. We had a fantastic main event. The storytelling was good. The matches were good. Overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, week after week, they're continuing to put on some of their best programming they've ever done. So, let's get into the show. So, before we open the show, we uh, get a video package of all the events that led up to the showdown between LAX last week. Kind of get everybody caught up to speed, which is good because I don't know if you guys have been noticing, but I see a lot on Twitter of people coming back and checking stuff out. So, just to get people caught up to speed is always a good way to start the show. So, we actually open the show with the OGs, Homicide and Hernandez versus Silver, Smith, and Lee. Some enhancement talent here. Um, very, very short. Uh, Hernandez ends up hitting the border toss, and the OGs go over. Uh, this was basically to lead into King grabbing the microphone and saying that the old man had to go, and he tells Conan to hit the road. Uh, King said he got tired of waiting, so he decided to stay two steps ahead. He said Homicide was left in a Mexican strip club collecting roaches, and Hernandez was stuck at home as Conan started the new LAX. So he says they only care about teaching LAX, the young boys as he called it, a lesson, and he announces a 5150 street fight for Slammiversary. So this should be great. It's just going to be a tag match. I wasn't sure if it was going to be a six six man tag, but just fine. This should be good. I'm very much looking forward to this match at Slammiversary. They've definitely done a good job building this up. Um, I think they said the tag titles weren't going to be on the line. I don't know if that's going to change at all. But I think I said this previously because this was spoiled because it was all over the internet when the tapings had happened. Um, but I didn't think the tag titles were necessary in this. But hey, we'll see how it goes. Uh, then we go backstage and Alicia is interviewing Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, we are told that she will be facing Allie tonight, and uh, Alicia tells us that she is here because she impre impressed Impact officials at a Rise event. Uh, Shotzi says she is here to prove that she is the ballsy badass that she says she is. So we get an OVE hand cam promo, and they are uh, basically hyping up the main event. They say they do six-man tag matches better than anyone, and there is no better trio than OVE. Then Sammy goes on to hype the match between him him and Pentagon at Slammiversary, the hair versus mask match, so good stuff there. And then we get the match of uh, Shotzi Blackheart versus Allie. Um, Josh kind of gave us a little bit of background information in the beginning of the match on Shotzi. Um, she's got a great look. I like her theme music. I don't know about the howling, but it got her some heel heat, so as long as she's putting heat on herself being the heel, I'm fine with that. Um, but it was a really good showing for her. Uh, the two of them put on a decent match. Shotzi was able to get a good amount of offense in. Uh, definitely enough to show that she is a competent competitor. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she is eventually signed. Um, but Shotzi goes up top. She misses. Ali ends up hitting her with a code breaker. She sells it really well. And Ali gets the three count. Of course, as Allie is leaving, making her way to the back, this brings Tessa out. She throws Allie into the guardrail, throws her into the ring, and hits the hammerlock DDT. So this match was basically setting up more between Tessa and Allie. Um, I would have been all right if they did put Shotzi over here with an assist to Tessa just to build more between her and Allie, but the way they did it was just fine, so no complaints there. Uh, we will get... A little more on that feud later on. Uh, we go backstage and Grado, Katarina, and Joe Hendry walk up, and Eli Drake is there. Uh, Hendry tries to introduce himself, but uh, Eli is obviously more interested in Katarina. Uh, Grado takes offense to this, and Grado challenges Eli to a match, and he's like, "I don't want to. I, I have no interest in wrestling. You want to wrestle her? Yeah." So that was good, and that sets up a match for later on in the evening. Um, and backstage still, Tessa tells us why she attacked Allie, and that's because Allie stuck her nose in her business with Madison Rain. Uh, she says that Allie is always trying to do the right thing. However, she is going to teach Allie that doing the right thing was the wrong thing for her. So we get a video package of uh, the Callahan and 
Eddie Edwards feud that's kind of transitioned into this Dreamer and Eddie Edwards feud. So more stuff there. And then we get that teaser promo again for this new knockout, which it seems like a lot of people think this is going to be Scarlett Bordeaux. I do not know much of her, um, but I've heard good things, so we will see. Um, and then we get Austin Aries cutting a promo on Moose and his training also backstage. Uh, he talks about a washed up NFL player and he says, no, 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 not Moose, but D'Angelo Williams. And he says, D'Angelo is here to give us an update on Moose's progress. So we will see an interaction between those two later on. Uh, we get the GWN flashback of the week. And this is Tarrant Terrell versus Gail Kim in the last knockout standing match. Um, just a, a good match. I mean, one of the standout knockout matches in uh, knockout history, so that's always good to see. Um, and then we got Josh Matthews in the ring, and he is interviewing D'Angelo Williams. Uh, D'Angelo talks about his training with Moose, and he says Moose has dropped weight and put on muscle, and then he calls Aries trash. Uh, we then get footage of Moose training, and D'Angelo says that he will be able to take out Austin Crybabies, or whatever his name is, and take the gold. Obviously, this brings out Austin Aries. Uh, he says, I know you know my name, and over the last few weeks, I keep hearing your name. So he runs D'Angelo down. He talks about him being forced to retire because nobody wants his services, much like his buddy Moose. Uh, he says that he came here to stay relevant, much like his buddy Moose. Uh, Aries then says, I have a message for you to deliver to Moose. He gets real close to him, hits him with the microphone. He lays out D'Angelo, then he grabs the chair, he misses, D'Angelo ends up grabbing the chair, but Aries low blows him, uh, then he hits him with the chair, obviously, and uh, this was just a great way to get heat on Austin Aries, dickhead Austin Aries is always the best Austin Aries, because um, he came out to the ring and the crowd was kind of chanting, but he was able to turn that around, and he was booed after he left, so good segment to put more heat on Aries and keeping Aries and Moose away from each other seems to be building up the match to be bigger than it is. Uh, then we go backstage and we see KM and Falaba. KM uh, wants to know if they're good after what happened last week. Uh, Fala shakes his hand. Then we get the Desi Hit Squad come up and Gama Singh says that they're going to bring Honor back to the tag titles and that Falaba and KM are not worthy. Uh, KM challenges them to a match and then Gama runs them down saying they are so North American. Ba can't control what goes in his mouth and KM can't control what comes out of his mouth. So I don't know match was officially made, but I would assume we will probably see that next week. Um, we head down to the ring and we have Eli Drake versus Grado. He comes out with Katarina and Joe Henry. Um, Josh makes a comment about Katarina's social media is saying that she posts more pictures of herself and Joe Hendry rather than herself and Grado, maybe, you know, signaling that she's ashamed of Grado. Um, but Eli controls the match pretty early until Grado ends up hitting a Hurricane Rana, which uh, Callus calls a Chunky Can Rana. Um, this, I, I did laugh at that. Uh, eventually, Eli puts him away with the gravy train. I mean, Callus just constantly ran down Grado, like when he was pulling his straps down. It, it was good stuff. Don is uh, really fitting in the role as the heel commentator. I, I think Josh should maybe be more of a face commentator because he was laughing at the stuff, but whatever. It was entertaining, so that's fine. Um, after Eli hits the gravy train and picks up the victory, Eli starts flirting with Katarina after the match, but then Joseph Henry Hendry gets between the two, and Eli's kind of like talking to Grado and being like, I think there's something going on between these two. Oh, wait, this is your girl? All right, I'll leave her alone. So it seems like we got something there. I, I don't know how long this is going to take to uh, progress. We're going to constantly get little bits week after week. Um, and then we get a Killer Cross promo. Uh, he cuts it on Petey Williams, saying he interjected himself into something that had nothing to do with him. Uh, he says, everyone pays the toll. Uh, we learn next week it will be Killer Cross versus Petey Williams, so that should be good. Uh, so we go backstage, and Alicia interviews Matt Seidel about his match at Slammiversary with Brian Cage. So I think it was a couple weeks back I talked about Matt Seidel's heel turn and the reason for it. Um, there was an article of an interview with Jimmy Jacobs, and he kind of said that 
Matt Seidel cut a promo, which he or Matt Seidel himself didn't think he was capable of, and I'm sure this is what they were talking about because he absolutely killed it. I, I love this promo by uh, Seidel. Um, but he says, you know, um, Seidel says that Cage is just as foolish as everyone else thinking size matters because if that was the case, he would have no career. Seidel, that is. Uh, he says, everything I have done in wrestling is beating guys bigger than me. It's what's on the inside that counts, and he shows that he is obviously confident he will walk out as the X Division champion. Um, but yeah, no, this was a really good promo by Matt Seidel. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually kept the title on him just after this to kind of build him up a little more. But on the other hand, I mean, it's inevitable before... Uh, Cage picks up a title, so I'm, I'm still on the fence here. Who knows if we're going to build some more with Congo Kong. Tough to tell. I like that we're kept guessing on things. Um, it's always good when matches aren't predictable, and it seems like this card, like most matches, could go either way. And speaking of Slammiversary, we are told that Tessa Blanchard will face Allie, um, so that's a big match for the two of them. Uh, Tessa should be able to pick up the win there, but again, you never know. Uh, so we hear that Moose has apparently called in, and uh, he says that next week he will be at the Impact Zone, and Payback is a bitch. Bitch. So I'm sure we'll have some sort of confrontation between himself and Austin Aries. Um, then we have Madison Rain. She's apparently having a sit-down interview with Alicia. Um, and almost immediately, Madison starts hearing noises, she kind of gets up, looks around, kind of lo looks in the, out of the room, down the hallway. So she turns back around and kind of comes back in the room. Alicia is gone, and there's a sheet draped over in the back with the uh, what I'm guessing was supposed to be blood on it. And it says, your time has come. She hears another noise and turns around, and you see a white gown kind of exit the room. Uh, she goes and follows it. The door slams shut. She tries to open it. Eventually she opens it, and we go right to commercial. So I really, really enjoyed this segment just because I'm not the biggest fan of Madison Rain's character. So I expected us to get an actual sit-down interview, which it, it's unnecessary. Well, she wasn't going to say much, but I'm glad they went in the direction they did. And uh, we pick this back up a little later on in the show for another great segment. And that brings us to the main event of OVE versus Pentagon Jr., Phoenix, and Rich Swan. Um... They gave this match a good amount of time, probably about 20 minutes, uh, and this was a tornado tag style match, so all men were legal at all times, and this was perfect for this match because it was basically absolute chaos from the start, something going on in every place, um, but the match didn't even get underway, and the crowd was chanting, this is awesome, so they were hyped for it. Um, we started off with a bunch of super kicks. Two teams went back and forth. Action spilled to the outside. Then we got everybody hitting a high-flying spot. At this point, an Impact Wrestling champ broke out, and uh, this is the first time I recall hearing one on TV, so it seems like we're really turning a corner here. Uh, we get the Tower of Doom spot when everything went back in the ring, which Jake Chris turned into a powerbomb. Uh, he went to cover Phoenix, but got a near fall. Uh, they battled back and forth some more. Uh, Pentagon Jr. ended up hitting the Pentagon Driver on Callahan, and he actually kicked out, which I was a little surprised. I figured the match could have ended there. Um, I'm not sure if somebody was supposed to actually interrupt the pin, but whatever. Um, we got a bunch of cutters going around. Uh, Jake hit a beautiful top rope cutter on Rich Swan, where each of them were on either side. I think Swan was going to jump on Callahan in the ring, but Jake intercepted it and hit him with the cutter. Um, what else happened? Oh, Pentagon and Phoenix hit a spike package pile driver on Callahan, which again was another near fall, another spot I would have expected to end the match. Um, Phoenix ends up hitting Dave with a double stomp on the apron. It was a great spot. And then on the other apron, Pentagon Jr. hits J. Chris with a package pile driver, which looked nasty. Um, and then Callahan ends up hitting... Rich Swan with Powerbomb after Swan went for a Hurricane Rana and Callahan caught him. And then he hits the get out of here for the victory. So a great match, complete chaos, back and forth. It, it was a lot of fun. Crowd was super into it. Exactly what a main event should be. And then to close out the show, we head back to Madison Rain. Um, she finds herself outside after she opened the door. 
Uh, she's trapped in the woods. All of a sudden, the undead bridesmaids kind of surround her, and they're all saying, your time has come, your time has come. And she's like covering her face, and then all of a sudden, they disappear, and she's kind of like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, you see Su Young appear behind her, and she turns around, and you hear this demonic voice go, your time has come, and she lunges her, and we end the show. Just great stuff here. Like I said, I wasn't completely into the whole Madison Ray and Sue Young thing, but this has definitely got my attention. I really like how Madison has been selling the character of Sue Young. Um, they're doing a good job with every match. Every match at Slammiversary seems like it means something. Um, the go-home show should be very good next week. Um, kind of hard to top what they've been doing, but hey, we'll see. So that is all I have for you guys today. I will catch you guys probably Sunday for another edition of the Impact Report. And thanks for checking out my video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.